So, uh, so as we begin, um, I first just want to thank all the groups that went before us in the Committee Advisory Board uh, meeting um, and for all the people that came in. Um, I really liked the technologies that we got to see, especially the uh, Target, uh, Menards, and Dell EMC groups with their information on the management and uh, disaster recovery solutions. I feel like if we put all of our projects together, we could have a really cool, uh, robust, modern network uh, to put together. But our group is going to be talking about deploying and matching um, collaboration systems, specifically using hybrid solutions. Um, and first, we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, so, My name is Brent Yarn, and I was our senior cloud engineer. I'm Arthur Kravitz, and I'm our senior network engineer. I'm Mitchell Miller. I'm our team lead and our senior, senior collaboration engineer. Uh, and then I'm Jack Moore, and I was our senior hybrid engineer. All right, and also we just want to give a really big shout out and thank you to Heartland, uh, who was our sponsor for this project. Um, thank you for, uh, from Will and, and uh, Jake to uh, help us in the long hours in the, in the lab um, troubleshooting the project and giving us the equipment to work with. It's a really great opportunity to work with them. Um, and yeah, we want to get right into this, so we're going to start off with the agenda. Yeah, uh, so the plan that we're going to kind of go over today, we're going to start off by letting you guys know the situation that we were uh, put in uh, with our problem statement, uh, kind of go over the solution that we went with and how we went about solving the problem statement. Uh, go over some topologies, kind of show you uh, where our company started out and where we're going to be taking them to. Uh, go over some demos, show you how the stuff works, and wrap it up. So for our capstone project, we had a company called Thomas Manufacturing, who was recently acquired as another company called Johnson & Group CEO. Heartland Business Systems asked our capstone group to provide a method for those two companies to communicate. Um, and to give a little background, Thomas Manufacturing has an on-premise Cisco collaboration system, which Johnson's Aluminum & Seal has a, kind of a, a hodgepodge of analog phones, digital PBX phones, and short-tail VoIP phones, and they have no video solution. So we propose that we're going to supply Johnson's Aluminum & Seal with a cloud-based collaboration system called Cisco WebEx, and they're going to use that to integrate it with the on-premise solution. Additionally, Tom Manufacturing has asked us to implement Office 365 instead of their current hosted exchange so they can host their email in the cloud as well as their Microsoft products. Okay, so we've seen a lot of networks today, so this one's kind of going to be simplified a little bit. Um, right, what we see up here is a logical topology of basically an internal network and a DMZ. This is pretty standard um, in an enterprise network. Um, the DMZ is going to be basically web servers, federation services, anything that you need to provide single sign-on, and web access for um, external users. Um, and then you have your internal network, which is going to be all of the devices such as Active Directory um, and uh, the federation services, as I mentioned before. Um, the Active Directory is going to be the group policy management and control for the users that are on the internal network. Um, and also they have their uh, voicemail with, through Cisco Unity Connection and also their Cisco um, call manager on the internal network. So now that we know a little bit more about the issues that Tom Manufacturing, the problem that they have with uh, recently acquiring Johnson Aluminum and Steel, we propose a solution to host Johnson Aluminum and Steel in the cloud to allow them to still be able to collaborate with Tom Manufacturing on site even though they're in the cloud. We're going to do this by utilizing the Cisco WebEx hybrid services to allow them to have that collaboration and be able to communicate across the network. And Tom Manufacturing has also asked us to host their Office applications and their email in the cloud. And we'll do that by utilizing Office 365. All right, now uh, throughout this project and uh, especially as we push forward for our the end users that we're going to be providing for, uh, we use a lot of different software, a lot of different things that they have to log into and that can get really tedious and really annoying, especially if you have different usernames, different passwords across everything. Uh, so a big factor that really helps uh, emphasize how much of a unified, connected network this is going to be is using single sign-on. And using the single sign-on that uh, John's, uh, Tom's Manufacturing has implemented, we'll be stretching that out to the services that we will be providing to kind of keep that, that cohesion and make it so that you're using the same username and the same password so nobody has to freak out because they have three different passwords and all of them have to change at different times. Kind of crazy nonsense. Uh, and then another thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, cloud services versus our on-premise services. And we're going to talk about this a lot today, so I just wanted to make it pretty out there and clear. Uh, our cloud services that we're going to be using are Cisco WebEx and our Office 365. Those are uh, services that are hosted on the web. We do not have them locally. Uh, but then our on-premise things that we're going to have are things like the domain controller, the ADFS, uh, the CUCM, CUCI, the presence, the PSN, the firewall, 
And then a uh, huge linchpin of the project, the uh, expressway C and E cluster, which kind of allows us to make that bridge from our cloud to our on-premise services. A couple of the cloud solutions that we'll be utilizing here are first, Cisco Web Executing Application. Um, a quote from Cisco says, all the tools, all the time, everywhere. It's a great way to explain what WebEx Teams is. But an example I like to use is it's almost kind of like what Facebook Messenger is. Facebook Messenger, you can have it on a mobile device, you can use it on your computer, and you can use it pretty much anywhere. You're able to message different groups or different people. You're able to make a phone call with them, video calls, and even schedule appointments. That's exactly what the WebEx Teams app allows Tom's Manufacturing and Johnson Lumen and Steel to do. They're able to have that collaboration between each other by having their organization, all their members within it, and teams that they can create within it. Office 365 is going to host all the Office applications that we all know and love, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It's going to host them in the cloud, and the users can also use the cloud applications that are available to them as well, like SharePoint, Teams, and OneNote. All right. Uh, so then something else that I'm sure you've also heard us say a lot of times now is uh, hybrid services. Uh, and hybrid services, in a nutshell, is just a service that allows you to connect your web services with your on-premise services. Uh, a lot of times using that Expressway CE pair that we were talking about earlier. But uh, hybrid services are just really awesome for making it feel as if everything is kind of all in one place. It doesn't let the user have to worry about whether or not they're using this app or that app, or how, or how they want to contact their friends and their coworkers. It all kind of works together. So it doesn't matter which app Jimmy's using or John's using, they can kind of all talk whether they are in the office or across the world. Okay, so as we've seen before, we had the uh, initial topology for Tom's Manufacturing and Steel, and this could, be, this could be any business really, given the nature of the logical topology here. Um, but what hybrid services allows us to do is take that existing on-premise investment of CUCM um, and that collaboration solution and not have to install that you know, at each site of Johnson's Aluminum and Steel, um, but allow them to integrate into the cloud using hybrid services uh, that are on the internal network. So we got the WebEx cloud and the Office 365 cloud. Um, those endpoints that are on the cloud are obviously going to be Johnson's Aluminum and Steel users. Um, and those are going to be able to contact uh, the internal network at Tom's Manufacturing uh, through the Expressway CE pair. Uh, but we're going to visualize those a little bit more in the upcoming demonstrations where we're going to show the uh, hybrid calling, the messaging service, um, and also the calendar as well as voicemail and the video mesh, which is our own, all very cool. And I'm going to pass it off to Brett to start off with that. Yeah, so the first type of service we're going to go and dig deep into a little bit more is the calling service. The calling service is probably one of the most important because it's going to allow both Tom's Manufacturing and Johnson Aluminum and Steel to be able to physically call each other. So it's going to utilize the Expressway CE pair that we've been talking about. And what that's going to allow the call to do is traverse across the firewall. It's going to use that pair to be able to complete that phone call um, from the cloud to the on-premise uh, user. The users at Tom's Manufacturing are going to have their normal desk phones at their office that are going to be registered to the call manager on site at Tom's Manufacturing. The users in the cloud at Johnson Aluminum and Steel are going to utilize the uh, Cisco WebEx Teams app that we were talking about. And that team app can actually register to the call manager on site at Tom's Manufacturing. And it will use that same dial plan that Tom's Manufacturing has configured on that call manager to get that for digit extension to give themselves a phone number. If we go to the next slide, you can see the topology here of how kind of the traffic flows. So the first line, the yellow line, is going to show how a WebEx device is going to register to the call manager on site at Tom's Manufacturing. The blue line next will show how a call is completed from a user that is either calling from the cloud or from on-premise to the other user. And it's going to go across that expressway CE pair to traverse the call across the firewall. And then the last line, which is the green line, is just going to show how two users on site at Tom's Manufacturing are still able to communicate with each other. So we will now hop into a live demonstration of this and how it will work. So up here on your guys' right, we have Cisco Jabber open. Uh, unfortunately, we can't patch into our network over in a different building. So we're going to use Cisco Jabber to represent uh, an office user at Tom's Manufacturing who needs to make a call to a WebEx user at Johnson's Balloon on the Steel. Say that they are at a business meeting somewhere across the world and they need to urgently get a hold of them. Because they have the WebEx team app downloaded either on their phone or on their laptop, they should still be able to 
dial their four digit extension to be able to complete that call. So we will, if we just, we can search for a person, and this is actually called a meeting room, so set up with a phone number, and we should be able to call it and show that we can complete that call. So it is using the hybrid services, because uh, that has registered it to our call manager and is getting a number from our call manager. So I will pass it on to Mitch, and he's going to talk about hybrid calendar and hybrid messaging. So our next two hybrid services are hybrid messaging and hybrid calendar. And the thing to remember about hybrid services is it, it's really helping protect the initial investment that Tom's Manufacturing put into their on-premise equipment. So it's linking that on-premise with that remote site between um, Tom's Manufacturing and Johnson Green and Steel. With hybrid messaging, it allows us to use our two different uh, messaging software, our Cisco Jabber, which is all based on premise, and our WebEx team, which is all based in the cloud. Um, and you can message between those, and the message will show up on, on both. Um, and then hybrid calendar will sync up your Outlook calendar with your WebEx teams and your Cisco Jabber calendar, no matter where you make the meeting. So we're going to go into some demonstrations, and I'll show you exactly how that will work after I talk about the topology. Um, so here, the first one will be uh, a triangle that's kind of representing how the uh, the Outlook calendar will sync with the Teams and the Jabber calendar. And then the next blue line will show the traffic flow from our on-premise Jabber in that bottom right corner where you see IMP and the little Jabber logo to the top left where it's a, a WebEx device. And that just shows how a message will blow through our network. So we'll move on to both demonstrations. So again on the right here, this is the Jabber user that I'm signed into. And on the left is Brent's user signed into the WebEx Teams. And the Jabber is all registered on-premise and the WebEx Teams is registered so in this scenario, me and Brent have a meeting, and I haven't scheduled yet. So he's going to ask me, uh, when is our meeting? And he's being forgetful. I forgot to schedule it in our Outlook calendar. So, but as you can see, it went from Jabber, or it went from Teams to my chat here in Jabber, showing that we can't communicate from the main site to the remote site with this messaging. Um, and then I'm going to go into my Outlook, and I'm going to create a meeting here. And I'm just going to call this meeting. And then a little keyword, at meet for the location. But when the email is sent, it'll populate that email with a bunch of information that'll allow you to sign into a, um, a Cisco WebEx meeting. So you can call in from any of your desk phones or anywhere you can call from a Jabber or call into a WebEx. I don't know, Brent here. So in that meeting, you see it, it did show up in my Outlook calendar. And then we go to Teams go to his calendar, and a little bit here, it should populate here. Um, so it, this kind of shows how not only do the hybrid messages link each other with the messaging, but they also link kind of everything together. So the messaging can also be helpful for using other hybrid services such as the calendar. And this is the meeting that I had added. It has both of us listed. Now we'll move on to Brent for the video mesh. So the last hybrid service, uh, so the last hybrid service that we have to show you is the video mesh. Video mesh essentially is going to allow Tom's Manufacturing to host all their video calls on site utilizing the resources that they have on their server instead of having it hosted in the cloud. From a business point of view, this is great because the end users are going to have a much better uh, video quality in their video calls and it's also going to reduce that latency that may cause some sort of buffering issue or uh, jiggering with the video calls. Um, also, if you exhaust all the resources on your server that you have allocated to your video mesh, that it will extend any more calls that are being made to the video mesh. It will just extend them to the cloud so the users aren't getting dropped with those calls and they're still able to uh, continue with their video conferencing. And then lastly, like I said before, you're utilizing the resources on your server. So you're going to optimize your server for just being able to get a little bit more out of what you paid for and also having that ability to scale if your company is growing even more, that you can just allocate more resources to your video mesh to allow for more video calls. On the next slide, we can just see how the topology um, of the network, or the calls flow throughout the network um, through the video mesh. So uh, this blue box on the bottom just shows on-premise users at Tom Manufacturing, and the green box represents the users at Johnson's Bloom and Steel in the cloud, and the green line just kind of shows how it goes right through the video mesh to complete that video call. And due to a lack of time, uh, we, if we were to make a video call, um, we would be able to show you on the Cisco WebEx Control Hub, but we just pulled up a graph here to show that um, if we were to make that call, that you could go into the analytics and the Control Hub to verify that you are using the on-premise video mesh instead of posting it in the cloud. With that, I'll let Mitch finish up our demonstration. So our last demonstration here is going to be about syncing your Cisco Unity connection, which is your voicemails that we left on your desktop phones, with your Outlook email. 
So when you when someone leaves you a voicemail, when you link it this way, it'll send you an email and you'll be able to listen to that voicemail from your Outlook. So from any device you can access Outlook, you'll be able to listen to any emails, even if you're away from your desk. So now I'm going to show you how exactly that'll work. So I'm going to have Jack call actually from the meeting room. Um, I'm going to pull up my email here and he'll leave me a message. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to, you won't be able to hear the message if I play it because the, we couldn't get the speakers working here. It was pretty inconsistent through our four or five tests in here. So we're just going to show you pop up and then uh, go from there. So we're going to let this ring out and then, um, as I mentioned before, it is really useful to have this feature because you can really listen to your voicemails from anywhere. So because we have a main site and a remote site, you'll be able to listen to your Michael emails Mueller. like you're commuting between those two available. different sites. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Uh, hey Mitch, this is like the fourth time I've called you. Uh, I was just trying to make sure that we'd still pass this class. I'm not really <laughs> sure what's going on. Uh, please get back to me as soon as you can. Um, and here you can see that mes that message popped up from the meeting room phone. Um, and then that is just a dot wave file that you can play to listen to that voicemail. But again, unfortunately, you couldn't get the speakers to work. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the project uh, presentation now with just a lesson learned slide. Uh, one of the biggest things that I took away from this project was, uh, and it's not lost on me at all, that we're doing a collaboration project, but collaboration and communication is really important. Um, one of the things that I found that we ran into as the semester went on was uh, we kind of had our own areas of expertise and uh, interests and things that we wanted to do. So we ended up getting a little bit siloed off towards the end. Um, so that collaboration wasn't really there, but we ended up uh, working through that. You know, we realized that we were doing a collaboration project. So we, were like, we should probably actually you know, collaborate on this. Um, so we pushed through that, and I think we got a pretty solid um, demonstration for you guys. Yeah, and I think I can speak on behalf of the team is that we got handed a lot of technology that we weren't comfortable with, we hadn't seen before, and so we had to learn to adapt to those new technologies, learn how what, exactly what it did, how to implement it into our network, and then how to configure it so it works with our network. And, you know, we had struggles, but we, we fought through them, and towards the end, once we saw everything come together, it was just really cool to see, and it just, you know, it's kind of eye-opening that there are a lot of technologies out there that you won't see be like ever before, and then you just kind of have to work your way through it to be able to get it to work with you, what you're trying to do. Yeah, so to build off that, determination really is key. That was one of the lessons that I took away. There were a couple weeks where we were in the lab four or five nights a week until like 2.30 in the morning. And actually, Will, one of our sponsors, was graciously on WebEx Puzzle with us often until like 11 p.m. So really, it, it, this was a good learning experience for us that sometimes you just have to keep trying when you don't know something. If it's a new technology, everything's not going to come easy. You just have to keep trying a while and eventually it will click and you will get it. And uh, another hot tip for everybody, if you're desperately calling Cisco Helpline at 2.30 in the morning, don't start with, hey, we have a fake company and we're building this fake network for it. <laughs> Tom and I have to help us out. I think we got transferred three or four times and at the end it's like, we'll email you tomorrow. And I'm still waiting for that email. <laughs> um, and then uh, lastly, especially with those late nights, uh, a huge bit of this was time management. Uh, obviously, and I'm sure this goes for everyone in all these capstones, uh, we're all students still. We're all taking class loads, we all have jobs, we're all trying to push towards our future and try to enjoy senior year as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, but time management has been a huge crunch and uh, definitely a challenge, but definitely something that I'm, I'm happy I was with the group that I was with. We were able to really you know, find the time to work with each other. We were able to you know, work around each other's schedules and you know, push through the late nights when they happened and come together and just really present an awesome project. Yeah, so even though, you know, Heartland was really gracious in, in helping us um, set up a project plan where we were able to have everything streamlined and laid out for us very well, it was still very hard, but it was also really fun and satisfying at the same time. Um, yeah, Jack was, and, and these guys are awesome. Work, but, you know, I mean, Jack, Jack permitted me to, uh, he didn't like his photo, so he kind of photoshopped his. Um, <laughs> Choice photo. <laughs> yeah, I'm a very visual person. So it, I, you know, it really, it, honestly, you couldn't even tell if you don't say anything. The camaraderie that we have, um, and I think all of us and all the Capstone projects have the same, you know, or a similar vibe amongst their groups and just amongst each other as a class too. So um, I just want to wrap it up with a, a thank you again to Heartland for that, and thank you to Holly, our program director, for being with us through the whole thing, um, and also just to uh, just to 
say thank you again on, a, on another slide. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>